let's wander around the battlefield a little bit. As you'll notice, nothing's moved. Uh, we're doing the command phase, and I wanted to share with you how that works real quickly. So the cool thing about all this, or interesting thing, it's not cool, uh, is that what we do is, uh, assuming this was a, another turn, the second turn in or third turn in, we go through this reorganization phase and try and bring units that had been previously eliminated or were reduced or whatever the case might be back onto the battlefield. It goes into this little, this little off map bucket that things go into, and they kind of cycle through. And then you would then roll for command. And what happens is that Napoleon can uh, spend three uh, action points. I'll show you over here, get a little closer. Three action points here to uh, put his uh, guys in command. And I'll explain how that happens in just a second. There we go. I wiped the lens so it's not as uh, cloudy. <coughs> so what happens is <coughs> this three, oh gosh, this three allows us to uh, activate three formations uh, or three offices. And so uh, if we were within one, two, three, four hexes, if this command here, Devo, there he is, was in range, which he's not, on the very first turn of the scenario, so I'm not sure if uh, there was much thought put into where these guys are, but we'll let the history play out as it is. Uh, then they would have been in command if they could have reached, but uh, they can't reach, so they're not in command. Uh, so DeVoe is uh, out of command, and he didn't roll a one, so uh, all of these guys uh, uh, he did not roll to be in command, actually, so we take that off. You're all following along so far? <laughs> so what we can do is then uh, roll independently for each of these units and uh, see if they succeed. And in fact, all of these guys rolled under four, and so they all succeeded, and they're all in command, and they're all in road march. Uh, so uh, we would have... Uh, so there, there's that action, okay? Then we uh, take Napoleon, and he can activate an officer and a combat unit, with one activation point. So he does that. So he activates these guys. So they don't have to roll. Uh, these guys up here are out of range of Napoleon. So he, uh, we have to roll for these guys. And we took Bernadotte and we rolled against his number of three, 50 50 chance of being in command, and we uh, failed. And the reason why we did that is because all these units have initiative ratings of two or three, and so we may as well just uh, take the best rating and roll. And then we looked at these guys here. Um, Murat has a rating of 1. These guys had a 4 and a 5, so we rolled for them independently, and they were all successful, basically. Over here, we had the same... Where are we? The same story. Uh, Lanes has a, a, a rating of 1. We rolled independently for the, uh, for the first division here, and the second uh, is out of command. Uh, of these vedettes here, uh, the three, one is out of command. So, uh, and over on uh, this right flank here, so they rolled and uh, he was fine and all his guys are in command. So it's an interesting start to the game. Before we even get going, uh, we have several units out of command. Oh, pardon me, guys. So now what does that mean? Here's the, here's the tricky thing. If you're rolling, if this had have been this unit here, and these guys were in road march, in command units move before out of command units. So my road march units would have had to drop out of road march and go through, assuming that these guys were in road march, and go through them and then go back into road march. So the sequencing of unit movement is tricky because all the units that are in command move first and those that are out of command move second and that's how that's the cycle in which you uh, you progress your units now being out of command really doesn't have that much of a negative effect uh, it impacts your uh, ability to advance after combat and, and a few other bits and pieces but it's not a huge deal uh, there is a, a special optional rule that says you know if you roll a six well I, I've adapted the rule basically saying that if you uh, 
if you roll for command and uh, you roll equal to the initiative rating, you can uh, only move, you move one less than your movement rate, which is what the optional rule says. And then it says if you roll one or two greater than your uh, rating, you uh, you can still move one un one hex. I've just made it. If you roll a six, you can't move, and if you uh, if you roll equal to or above, uh, you can move one hex. Just to keep it simple, not one movement point, just one hex. Uh, I'm not sure that'll make a terrible difference, but we'll see. Anyway, I, I just I just don't want to mess with you know looking at differentials uh, for every single roll, given that we had to roll for nearly every unit on the board already.